Hi, everyone. My name is Madeline Eames, and I have just been talking with Raj from the On Call Empath. And we have been diving deep into the experience of an empath and the link between being a highly sensitive person with a highly sensitive nervous system and the link between that and trauma and also chronic pain. And I had a chance to speak about my own experience with that that led me to be so passionate about this area that I work in and also to use the tool of transformational breath work that me in my own life after 30 years of being a trauma therapist for me getting to the deeper intergenerational trauma I personally haven't found anything more powerful and effective and efficient and that's what we're looking for all right guys we are back for another episode of the On Call Empath. And I got a good one for you today. I know that chronic pain is a very big thing nowadays with uh, trauma victims, empaths, highly sensitive people. So I wanted to bring in somebody who's not only just an expert, but has a lot of different tools in their toolbox. Um, I know I've had a lot of different types of um, pain specialists on this podcast um, I've had over almost 150 guests on here. So I wanted to switch it up to bring in somebody who has over 30 years of experience. And not only that, that they utilize breath work. And my next guest is an, identifies as, as an empath. And she's going to share her story in a little bit here. But we're going to also talk about the importance of transformational breathing. Um, and this is something at first I was just like, oh gosh, you know, does, does that really work? Cause I've tried all types of meditation and breathing and, but this is different. Um, you definitely want to tune into this. She puts a different spin on this. Um, and she has partnered up with a doctor to create this amazing course that, uh, I'll have the links in the bio and her name is Madeline. Eames. And uh, she really spoke out to me when I talked to her not too long ago, and she shared her story. And and that's when I knew, like after reading her background, that this is a person that I want, not only just on the Elite Series, but to share with all of you guys all across the world, uh, that there is hope, you know, and then that's the thing, you know, a lot of us have given up, we've tried everything, we've tried the medical community, try to go to doctors, you know, try, you know, um, all different types of modalities, um, even like holistic. But when it comes down to it, we're all individual beings, what works for me may not work for you. Trauma is a journey. And I've had all kinds of different people on this podcast who share their story. Some do very well with breath work. Other people respond with other modalities, but give this episode stick around till the very end. Um, Cause I think you're going to get a lot out of this episode and I think you're going to uh, learn a lot. I know I certainly did. Madeline is truly an amazing person, what she's doing and, and giving back to the world. Um, so Definitely check out this episode. I'm super excited. I am completely booked for this end of this year. And I have so many amazing guests for you guys. So you definitely don't want to miss it. Please keep sending me those messages. It truly means a lot that I'm uh, helping people out there by this podcast. And also, if you can support uh, me with the link below, it would definitely help me out. Subscribe, share this episode with somebody. It helps me bring more people Um more new guests from all over the world on this podcast to present to all of you guys. You guys mean so much to me. So thank you so much and always keep moving forward. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. All right, guys, we are back for another episode of the on call empath. All you empaths out there definitely are tuning in to a episode. You do not want to miss my next guest. Madeline Eames is a uh, chronic pain specialist and today we're going to be talking about everything about empaths and her story of intergenerational trauma breath work definitely don't want to miss it but in this elite episode i want to take the honor and and, and let you guys know that 
Madeline is very good at what she does. She's going to be sharing her true inspirational story with all of you guys. So let's just dig right into it. Madeline, welcome to the uh, On Call Empath. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, Raj. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to dive into my favorite topic. Absolutely. Absolutely. And chronic pain is a very big issue nowadays, especially with empaths and trauma victims. So without further ado, let's just dive right into it. Um, how? Tell me a little about your background and how it kind of led you into working with empaths, because I know that's your specialty. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think like most empaths, we kind of stumble upon it at a point in time where we're like, what is going on here? And then somehow it lands on our plate. So, um, you know, just looking back, of course, uh, 2020 vision, I can see uh, throughout my whole life, I was like a bundle of anxiety. You know, as a young kid, I had always had this feeling of dread in my stomach and stomach aches and, and all that kind of thing with, with no known cause. And, you know, so I kind of <clears throat> throughout my life, um, always had this feeling of being sort of on overwhelm. So uh, being hypervigilant also about my, my environment. And it wasn't until, you know, really, I'd been a trauma therapist for about 30 years. Wow. And I was um, in a conversation with my, my three siblings at a, at a family reunion. And I realized in that moment that I perceived things, I um, dealt with things, it, it very the very same situations in our family where we were all there in very, very different, in a very different way. And I was feeling everything in the room, all the emotions felt and mostly unfelt um, in the room. And so it was very shortly after that, that I came across this term. And at that point in my life, you know, working with trauma for so long, um, I was in a period of burnout myself, which is not unusual for empaths. I burnt out twice in my career, always blamed it on myself. Um, I was tired and I was starting to get chronic body aches and pains. So I was really looking at, uh, I wasn't sure if I was going to get back in the saddle, so to speak. Yeah. And I, again, came across the term empath. It's not like I'd never seen it before. I'd been right. living in these worlds. And, um, but I thought, well, I'll just take an empath test. And uh, of course, I came up like off the charts, emotional empath. And like many empaths do, we look back in our lives and we think, wow, it's that, that was like the missing piece of the puzzle. And I could see how I shut down and used ways to manage emotions that I didn't know were not mine, um, that I was absorbing through through my environment. And, and um, yeah, it was like my life went from like black and white to color. And so that started me on a whole other path. And of course, you know, I realized that actually most of my clients were empaths and my private practice, trauma therapy, and at the chronic pain clinic that I was working in, we were mm -hmm. basically not all, not everyone. Uh, we were talking about similar types of things. So that's kind of how I, how I even got here this late in my career, really. Right. That's amazing. And there's a lot of people listening right now that may not identify as an empath. However, they probably went through some sort of trauma, even um, people after COVID people are saying they've been traumatized um, just trying to make sense of the world. And and does it ha have to be a link? I mean, w can you talk about the link between empaths, uh, trauma victims, and chronic pain? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, first of all, I just want to say that there because you've had a trauma or you have a highly sensitive nervous system doesn't necessarily mean that that right. leads to chronic pain. Right. And at the same time, if you live with a chronic pain condition, um, ongoing pain that persists, um, it doesn't mean that you are an empath. <laughs> so, so it's not a, a direct uh, link, but certainly a high proportion of people that we see are also deeply feeling um, a very open, sensitive nervous system. So, you know, uh, it could go a couple of ways, you know, having an 
you can be born, my belief is you can be born an empath or you can develop an extra sensitive nervous system through your early experiences mm -hmm. um, throughout your life. And I have one son who was clearly mm -hmm. born an empath and the other was not. And it's yeah. either good nor bad. <laughs> um, and it was so obvious to me. And so if you are already, I mean, it just makes sense. If you have a very sensitive nervous system, you're usually... And in its experience of a lot of empaths, you're usually sensitive to a lot of in, incoming stimulus, input, sounds, tastes, smells, uh, feelings, of course, emotions. And it's like our radar is just picking up on a lot of things that other people perhaps aren't in the room, which has been my experience. And so that can be made worse by early childhood or later in life experiences where you know, my, my definition of trauma is that it is too overwhelming for the system to process at the time. And that was certainly my experience. It's so, it can be, it, it's a spectrum. It can be very overwhelming. So you can see how that would prime us for an experience, a reaction of trauma um, in our body. And we do all kinds of things to compensate, to cope. Mm -hmm. We we numb out, we get busy, we blame, criticize, yeah. we drink or um, drugs or alcohol, food, all those things. Sure. Makes sense. We're just trying to survive, basically. Right, right. There's no blame here at all. Um, and if you've had that experience, there's we now know through some of the biggest um, you know, childhood adverse experience studies and other studies that it makes you more likely to develop. Yeah ongoing pain and the definition you know we have this thing called central sensitization where our nervous system hasn't turned off can't it hasn't turned down the volume of pain even after the injury or condition has been mm -hmm. healed it keeps going on high alert so you can see how that state is very similar to the state of the open nervous system of the empath so it's not unusual for empaths to go that route. And I certainly was well on my way there. Mm -hmm. And I had to kind of backpedal in many ways um, to find things that were going to help me to heal, to uh, regulate and stabilize my nervous system, as well as learning the knowledge about um, chronic pain, and, which I'll say we have so many advances in science but a lot of people are not aware of that piece of yes. the central sensitization. Totally. And, and, and I know there, there's someone listening right now who, um, you know, maybe not identify as an empath, maybe more like highly sensitive or, you know, been through trauma um, and they've tried everything. And, and I know that you've been in this realm for a long time and you have some good background in trans uh, transformational breath work and healing uh, with trauma and pain. To the average person that's listening, maybe they've they've heard of this or maybe they've tried it. And um, I wanted to ask you, what is your take on that? And and how how do you um, kind of help others um, see the importance of breath work? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I, I didn't come upon it, you know, just as the one thing that that works. I had probably I've, you know, worked a lot with EMDR, um, a lot of somatic, our body um, work. Um, and uh, so I've done a lot of trauma treatment leading up to um, just by chance, uh, taking a transformational breath work journey. And I'm also a yoga teacher. So it's not like, you well, know, you I haven't go. done breathing. <laughs> I wrote a book on breathing about 10 years ago, <laughs> but it was a very, very different type of breathing I was doing. I was doing the calming, the deep belly breathing, diaphragmatic, which I absolutely love. Um, and I teach a lot of that as well. The restorative breathing patterns that we've lost because, you know, when we're living in a state of overstimulation, we're usually in a chronic fight, flight, freeze state. Right. So very shallow, rapid breathing. So our body thinks we're in danger most of the time. Um, and uh, so I happened to take a transformational breath work journey. And I truly felt, Raj, like after that journey, I've refined it a little bit more to, to you know, to this, to my own practice. 
that I had healed so many things in terms of intergenerational trauma, because that was the missing piece. We, mm -hmm. in, in one session, than I ever could have got to with the 5% of my conscious mind. I can't think, of, think my way through these things. Mm -hmm. I can't change my mindset, my thoughts, to get to something that I don't even know is there in my subconscious and so we know through the field of epigenetics now right. that, you know, we can hold trauma and in our, in our bones, in our body for up to 14 generations. It's crazy. Yeah. And yeah, so I, I really feel, you can tell I'm very passionate about this, um, yeah. that we blame ourselves for so many things, whether you're an empath or, or not, if you're experiencing, maybe you've had trauma, maybe you just you're living with pain we tend to blame ourselves what are we doing what am i not doing what am i yeah and often the medical system will tell us like you know there's nothing much really left we can do for yeah. you where does that leave a person it's a terrible yeah. place to be so with the transformational breath work what i've been working with is a very deep now deeper breath um into the places where we're stuck and frozen in our bodies simply with our own breath and I call it womb breathing and it's not just for people with wombs or not just for women <laughs> but it really is going back to those places where in our body where we feel stuck and 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 frozen and um you know and through that a lot of what my clients were telling me I don't do anything that if I don't see that it's working especially on myself yeah a lot of what my clients were telling me was the same thing when we really get at this and go deep into the into the the breath, we have an extraordinary ability um, to to activate some of our own healing. So that's what took me to this very specific part of what I do now. Mm -hmm. But with that, I do want to say that when it comes to um, trauma if you you know for your listeners that have experienced trauma or right now are ha are living with chronic pain i would say a really a balance of both is really what uh, i have found to be most healing so knowing the why knowing the yeah. science of pain like that, that's really important to know that part and also to have the information about being an empath how to set boundaries how to help your body to feel safe in this world it's you know it's a it's a big call it's a tall order to feel safe in your nervous system mm -hmm. and then with the addition of the transformational breath work i yeah uh, that's what i i yeah. tend to do both the bottom up and the yeah. top down now i mean i've had a lot of chronic uh, pain uh, specialists, doctors on this podcast, and everyone has something to offer any, some different tool uh, in their toolkit. Right. So they, and in your case, um, breath work is, is one of them. So if you can kind of explain to the audience, um, especially like after, you know, creating your courses, your meditation programs, all of that, um, what would you say? Like, the is like the biggest thing that you use in your toolkit because i mean you have you have a lot of expertise in a lot of different areas so i just want uh to give an idea to all those listeners out there like what can they do like just starting off right now um and they don't really know which direction to go yeah i mean if this is something that they haven't tried or maybe they have tried it before and they and they'd yeah. like to just to try it and see what the experience is like um i i would at this point of where I am right now, I'm focused mostly on transformational breath work just okay. because of the feedback and, you know, uh, from my own, my own experience to really kind of to get more to, to the root within a, uh, a concentrated period of time. So we're not continually um, beating ourselves up about, you know, why am I not healing? So, um, so for that, I do, I do online, um, breathwork journeys, um, about every two weeks. And that's a, that's a great place to just come online and, you know, with me and check it out from the comfort of your own home in your own environment mm -hmm. and to start to just to start e experimenting almost with this 
this new way, mm -hmm. uh, new, but not so new way of healing mm -hmm. our bodies. And also I've um, partnered with a chronic pain physician who is actually my, my partner is going to be joining us oh, in this go. program. Yeah. So it's a real partnership um, because I do feel like at this point in time, it's, you know, it's a, it's a time for people who are deeply feeling to get strong and to get resilient again and come back and rise because often though often, you know, uh, um, empaths are, they're not only sensitive, but they can be in my experience, very creative, you know, very creative, very intuitive, obviously um, with, you know, and that part mm -hmm. of them simply because of, fear, um, overwhelm has mm -hmm. been shut down. So I, I really feel like there's a calling for this in the world right now. So if, you know, for your listeners that are empaths or not, um, but don't feel like they are living really in the full expression of themselves in their bodies, that those are the people that you know now we have uh, a time and we have the information and we have the tools that we need to help those people to come alive again to come alive in their bodies alive mm -hmm. in their breath and using the science of what we know which is a lot mm -hmm. and also these tra tools of yeah. transformation in this course the alive empath yeah. and one thing i want to point out to all my listeners out there that, um i know there's a lot of people that uh, do have similar programs where they have breath work courses or, you know, meditation and all this, and you may have tried it before, but also look at, look at the background of the person. I mean, um, Madeline's has almost 30 years of experience. She's partnering up with a doctor. She's done her homework. So I think um, just the proof is not only in the pudding, but you've been through your own trauma. So it's not only it's something that you talk about, but you've been through it. So it's like, for me, that I think that's huge for, for people to understand. And it's not just like another program where you could just take a six week course. Then, I mean, this is like something that you mm -hmm. put your life into. So that's why I just wanted to point out there for everyone listening. If, if you're on the fences, um, you know, and you're just like, Oh, another breathwork course, or I've already done like this and it hasn't worked, but have you really tried, mm -hmm. have you really gone to somebody who understands it inside and out that has put in the work and that has been through trauma and now, living it and teaching it to the world like like you so i appreciate mm -hmm. everything that you're doing for for the world <laughs> and empath yeah I, I yeah absolutely and I, I think everyone or so many people that i have sat with and listened to and and worked with they feel exactly like that and i felt like that too yeah you know i've done the breath work i've done enough breathing i know the information i've tried mm -hmm. that and and you know and and maybe feeling let down by the medical system yeah. because they, you know, they do what they can and that's that part. Yeah. But I really believe like we need both. So Absolutely. I really empathize with those listeners that are feeling mm -hmm. that way. Like, you know, I don't know mm -hmm. what's, what is, what is next. And absolutely. I think it's great that you're you're getting in also uh, the medical community in because I've had doctors on here and and they have their place. But let's face it. I mean, a lot of people that I've talked to personally, people that have written in, you know, the sometimes that may not be the the right answer. You know, you have to do what works for you. And if you've tried something for dec decades like I have, you know, I went through physical therapy, chiropractic, pain medicine, injections and just about everything underneath the sun i mean you get to a point where you're just like why even try like i mean i've tried everything what is this next thing going to offer me and i'm telling you guys there's something here or i wouldn't have her on the elite series so definitely check out all that information in the bio below and i'll have all that information for you so just kind of wrapping up here i do want to um switch gears and and because i didn't know that um, you're also a writer, <laughs> like you've done, uh, mm -hmm. stuff on the tiny B Buddha, which I also follow for a while and, uh, something did stick out to me. So I just want to read it. And if you can just kind of, um, interpret it after I'm done reading this little quote that you wrote, um, it goes, it wasn't until my job to change myself to fit in or 
a change a uh, profoundly stressful society it was a uh, it was my job to listen closely to a finely tuned nervous system that alerted me to when it had enough and it was time for rest, peace, and solitude. I no longer had to please others to keep the peace and I only had to please myself. And when I read that, I was just like, wow, like you're a good writer. And I know tiny Buddha's, you know, fairly, um, popular out there i know i i do read some of the uh, some of the uh essays that they're written on there but i didn't know that you do that also what were you mm -hmm. what does that mean to you mm. yeah wow that was that was well chosen <laughs> um it's this journey from realizing that you're not here you're not here simply to please other people so that you can down regulate the noise out there Mm -hmm. You are here to tune into yourself and to really listen and hold yourself in a place of healing. And because you're not a problem to fix. And many of us feel like I am a problem. I have a yeah. problem to fix that. You are a human. You're a highly sensitive human to hold. Yeah. And when we come back to that, when we start to, heal so that we're no longer abandoning ourselves but we're responding to ourselves that's when the true nervous system mm -hmm. healing can begin and that's a journey to get to that point because there's a lot of conditioning out there that will keep us focused outside yeah um, we've all done that and you know i did that for many years it's exhausting it's absolutely exhausting coming back to remember that you're not a problem to fix you're a human to hold and that's like the starting point <laughs> that's like the healing point yeah yeah well i definitely want to say you are definitely going to change the world so definitely keep doing what you're doing um before we take off here i'm going to give you like the last word um one i just want you to address the person that's listening that might be a little bit scared to make that change and make that first step. And then two, can you tell us where we can find you and what you're up to coming up in 2023? Cause I know you're super busy and you got a lot of things on your plate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If I was sitting there and I wasn't sure, and I tried so many things and you know, there's often a mistrust. Is this really, you know, that's okay. I get it. I, I, I absolutely understand. And, you know, people can simply reach out to me if they have questions. Um, join yeah. one of my my breathwork journeys and you get a more feel for me, you know, and who, who I am and how I work. That's a, you know, it's really important that this relationship. Yeah. Um, and, you know, for your listeners, I, I would really like to offer, um, you know, half, 50% uh, off on their first breathwork journey. There you um, go. Simply to dip your toe in. <laughs> Just, you know, come in and, and give it a try. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the other thing is, you know, to, to uh, just yeah to to look at my some of my, my courses online at mindfullivingnow.com um, I have two wonderful courses that I'm also including in my live empath course, which will really kickoffs in uh well really begins january 1st the year of the empath i say <laughs> um so yeah dip your toe in try it with me um i have a book called uh, good morning dear dear empath if they're more interested mm. in in uh in reading um everybody learns in in different ways um and um yeah, or to join me online um, mm. on Facebook. Um, I've got uh, Wild Woman Empath Breathwork. Mm -hmm. And um, that's a private group. We've always got lots of great discussions going there. And, mm -hmm. you know, um, just have a poke around and see as an empath or a highly sensitive person, see how that lands in your mm -hmm. body and pay attention to that. Um, and and, you know, for my upcoming course, uh, The Alive Empath, um, any um, courses that 
you know, any journeys they take, I uh, will take that off the price of the, okay. the course that's going to be coming up. Um, and I'll just say mm -hmm. like, if I can for, for the six month course, <clears throat> there are simple, cause we don't want to overwhelm yeah. lessons each week that come through. We get, we have one breathwork journey together and we also have a coaching consultation call with, um, mm -hmm. with a pain physician. So that I'm really geared. I'm really excited. That's about. awesome. I've uh, never heard that where you have a follow-up with a doctor, obviously everything we speak on here is not medical advice. Definitely go mm -hmm. see a qualified physician if you're going through any mental health issues. However, but I just really think that's cool that you have the whole package. So definitely guys go check her out. And if you're uh, also overseas or you're outside the U S still give her uh, a check. Cause I know a lot of you guys do reach out from other countries. So it doesn't matter where you are in the world. Um, I'm sure you'll be able to uh, accommodate um, with those people as well. Cause I have that little crowd there too. So. Oh, I see people from all over, all, all over the world. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Well, it's been a true honor and you're always welcome back on the podcast. Thank you so much for your time today. It's been a true honor. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Raj. Thanks for having me and all the work that you do for uh, the empaths, highly sensitives in the world. All right. Well, definitely. I appreciate it. All right, guys, that does it for this episode of the Elite Coaches Series. Stay tuned for a lot more episodes that are coming up. And always, guys, keep moving forward. And we are out.